the Tomo collection, uh, the first that I noticed that you changed the interface. You put all the data in the low down corner. Why? Uh, just you know, to give more real estate for the game itself. Uh, you know, we we had to increase the size of some fonts and things like that, but we also you know didn't want to obfuscate the actual play space. So, mm -hmm. uh, in in a transition from one platform to another, you have to be sensitive to those types of things and, uh, and do whatever you can to make a great play experience. So, it's just in the name of that. Okay, understand. Uh, what about touch interface? What about shaking interfaces? That all stuff that they have in the Switch. Did you use it in the game? Yeah, so we tried to leverage as much of the technology that Switch offers as possible, uh, whether it's offline, you know, wireless LAN, uh, and then for using the actual Joy-Cons, uh, we used Flick uh, to roll. So uh, the one thing, because we were short, you know, the, the second thumbstick, uh, that's why we used Flick for roll. Because um, it, it's kind of fun, you know, you're, you're jerking anyway because you're about to die. Uh, so it, it always felt kind of natural to, to use the flick. And it's, it's directionally sensitive too, which is cool. What hero was the most difficult to adapt to controller? I mean, here to Switch and prior to that, uh, then you adapted to PlayStation yeah. 4. So unfortunately I wasn't part of the original uh, adaptation for consoles. So mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know firsthand who they wrestled with most. You know, we we've been tr true to to the other console versions, so we haven't changed uh, you know gameplay or, or how the heroes work. Um, I I would imagine the ranged classes. You know, like putting putting myself in their shoes, uh, I would imagine the ranged classes with knowing what to target uh, mm -hmm. was probably a challenge um, that they had to overcome. Because you know, in normal Diablo, if you're on PC, you've got your mouse telling you where where you're going to be shooting or what have you. So um, being intuitive enough to understand where the player is probably meeting that thumbstick to be able, uh, I think is a challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The question that I'm most con concerned of, Switch is a, a session-based console. You play it in the metro, in the transport, you, you just got in for five, 10 minutes, and then you'll quit. Yeah. Uh, and in Diablo, you can't you can't uh, save your progress uh, every time, like in other Switch games, actually. Uh, maybe you will add some tools for these gamers who play on Switch to enable them to save their progress more rapidly. Yeah, so we were very sensitive to the fact that with an offline mode there would be you know, strings attached, essentially. Um, so we allow you to keep your progress when you're offline. Uh, so that you aren't punished for playing offline. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's no problem with you getting some new gear, logging out, uh, you know, in this case, just kind of turning the game off. Uh, you will still have that gear when you come back. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. I didn't know about uh, yeah. this mode. Uh, well, uh, okay, after the success, I mean, I think so, of Necromancer, uh, can they expect any other classical heroes, maybe for free, in Diablo. In Diablo. Uh, at this time, we don't have any plans for any more heroes. Um, we are extremely uh, happy with uh, the season of green that we just did. Um, by putting new content into seasons uh, and new experiences into seasons, uh, we've seen a lot of players coming back, really positive sentiment from the community. So uh, our current focus right now is to do even more with seasons, uh, which we'll be talking about more in the future. Okay, a cross-game question. Uh, your colleagues from uh, Heroes of the Storm, they add Mephisto to the game. But it is comparatively small, because Diablo is huge, and the game, the Mr. Mephisto, was as big as Diablo. But yeah. in Heroes of the Storm, it's, it's smaller. If I were you, I would be kind of being disrespected. <laughs> Do you feel like that? No, like, I think one of the fun things about Blizzard is like we are many separate game teams who are under the halo of one publisher and we're allowed to kind of explore the space and do what's right for our game, right? Uh, the same reason, same way I wouldn't want heroes to be telling us how, you know, we should have done the Switch, you know, controls or something like that, right? Like, we're given license to do what's right for our game and, and I respect, you know, their, their decisions around hero identity and things like that. So it didn't say anything. Okay, last question. Uh, I completed Diablo 3 four or five years ago at the PC. Uh, how will you inspire me and guys like me to re-complete it again here 
a Switch. Yeah. I think one of the most exciting things we're doing for return players, uh, aside from giving you the portability, which I think is super important, uh, is allowing you to jump directly into an adventure mode. Uh, we, we also uh, have been playing this game for a long time. Uh, I myself have you know, beat this game on PC and Xbox and PlayStation 4. So I was also done with you know, going through the campaign experience again and again. Uh, so no more needing to beat the campaign to unlock the adventure mode. Um, if you're a new player, you know, that is of course still there and, and you should play the campaign. It's a great story. Um, but if you're a returning player who just wants to start hacking and slashing and getting loot, uh, you can go directly into adventure mode. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay. Bye.